Hello, I am Caitlin, and I wanted to continue my piece on living world and how you can make your D&D game a more kind of living and vibrant world which your players can get immersed in. Um, this particular video, I want to talk about things that you can do out of the game to continue to kind of keep your players involved or provide a little bit of information that maybe gets them ticking over to the next week's session. Um, and I'm going to start talking particularly about things that you can do in, you know, discords or kind of chat servers that you may have, you know, WhatsApp groups, that kind of thing. So, to open, one of the simplest things that you can do kind of between the weeks in small group chats and such is one of two things. The first would be if you have important NPCs or characters that your players want to question, but you don't necessarily want to run for the entire session. There's nothing stopping you from running a kind of mini in-character open forum questioning where you as the DM can respond as an important character. Um, I did this recently with some of my players who were interrogating a rather powerful uh, celestial creature. And I kind of just made a chat channel for them. I sat down and said, you throw your questions at the character and I will get back to you whenever possible and kind of give you the, the back and forth on that. It was a very open and shut way to keep players invested in the session outside of the session and let us kind of progress things a bit forward from where we were last session into the next. Because the questions they had, when you put players on the spot in the moment, they can kind of just mind blank immediately and struggle um, to want to really get off of the spotlight as quickly as possible, giving them a little bit of time to sit down and go, what do we, what do we think about this? What do we think about that? If we say this, how will they react? It really helps drive the point forward of this is your story. You know, you can make of it what you will and you are the front runner. Another thing that is reasonably easy to do out of the game in kind of a chat channel setting um, is that of updates to the setting, world news, reports and such. I know that, that sometimes there are players who will like to do uh, recaps on you know, last session, this happened, that happened. That's not quite what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is if we go to uh, my kind of map section here. Let's say that the players are here in the the Orion Lowlands section of my map. Maybe they want to have an update on what's going on in another country or another continent, or perhaps you know they're headed to uh, the Akaran Abyss just over, and they want to see the news of what's going on. Well, they could perhaps pick up some kind of leaflet or newspaper describing what exactly is going on. Or you as the DM could do a bit of a kind of here's what's going on in the world as you know they go into a tavern, you end the session, and you give them a couple of like little tidbits of what's going on in, in the wider world, not just in the in the area that they're going to, but you know the queen has said this. There's news of a war brewing in the west, down south there might be uh, a new kind of mercantile guild growing or rumors of a, a fevery kind of uh, band of miscreants kind of deal just little plot hooks that don't have to lead to anything but you can kind of lay the grounds that you might do something with them later or at the very least progress the kind of the wider world around them in a way that you don't have to throw on the screen, but it keeps everything moving in the world around the players, not just their own influences. Because the biggest thing with D&D and keeping it a living world is the acknowledgement that your NPCs might be non-player characters, but they still have lives. They still do things. You know, They still have their motivations. How do their motivations lead to stuff happening in the world? Well, you want to make sure your players see that. And that is one of the biggest things that you can do outside of the game, is just give them these little 
news updates and keep them informed on what those NPCs are doing while they're not there. Now, one more thing that I want to go over is an important part of out of game interactions with your world is kind of cataloging things, especially if you want to kind of develop a world that has a ton of characters, maps, and other little details, or if you're like me, add in random game systems. Having a um, section where people can read all these things is useful. I'm not saying create like a lore dump area, because players can go off when you just give them a massive wall of text, kind of have the whole, my eyes blur, I don't know what's going on, I just kind of read through it, whatever DM, let's get to the, the session itself. What I'm saying is that you should have these easily readable or glanceable sections that have character names or character images. If you're playing online, like I normally do, you might want to have a collection of tokens because obviously while your players could easily see um, the tokens, names and characters that you have in the list if you want them to, what might be better, especially if you're running a long-term campaign with many characters, many monsters, is to create a kind of important character images section where you show this is the general, this is the captain, here's the wizard that you've met, here's one of the player's favorite kind of NPCs, give them their names and have an easily permissible list that they can all go through so that when you throw on a character that maybe they haven't seen in a month or two, they can go, oh, it's this person or, you know, oh, I remember seeing their image or it's easy for them to draw upon and see later. The same goes with maps. This is a little bit different if you're playing in real life. You can obviously kind of draw your own maps, lay them out in paper or something if you have that kind of skill. But not everybody will be playing offline, particularly in the current climate. So what you might want to do is employ um, many of the kind of map creators online and keep and keep a catalogue again of these various maps from continent maps to cities to uncommon pathways, treasure maps, or even just provincial maps um, that you will kind of gather together and allow the players to peruse. You know, if, say, they're going to the Orient Lowlands, and I'll bring this up on the screen in a minute, there might be a map of how this uh, city connects to that. What about the map of the actual kind of city layers themselves, which I can find. Uh, this should be it, just as an example, you know, you go into one of the cities, there's a map of, you know, the various different districts, uh, how that kind of roughly looks. Obviously, as a DM, you're going to explain this and kind of theatre of mind, going through the different houses and such, but players might want to easily catalogue these maps, even if they're not in the city. You know, this is my capital city of Esna. And whilst it's a little bit of an old version of it, players might be halfway across the world, but want to go back to Esna, teleport there, or discuss something that they were kind of planning there. So they need to be able to access the map. Keeping this catalogue of easily accessed images out of the game is another way of providing discussion, letting them kind of access things that you as the DM kind of have the sole influence over, but lets them have those moments to really keep their thoughts on what you're doing, keep the world ticking over in the back of their subconscious, that kind of thing, which is what you really want to encourage if you want players to interact with what you're doing. Okay, honestly, God, final thing I want to add on is a, mom a moment ago I talked about uh, various kind of systems and such that I like to add to games. I've been known by my players to add kind of empire building, settlement management, uh, survival in the wilderness and such as mini systems. And these must be included out of the game. They need to be somewhere that your players can easily access, review your rules and kind of get to grips with whilst not always having you there to tell them and handhold them on what they do. Especially because there are gonna come times where you as the DM kind of go hands off and say, okay, do this. Or okay, what are you doing this week with that kind of settlement management? And the players are going to look at you if they haven't been able to read it out of the game. Their eyes will again glaze over and they'll just give up and let the player who knows it best run it. I've had this happen. I probably will continue to have this happen. 
until players get to grips with it, and you very much need to make sure they have an easily accessed area to learn how it works. One of the key reasons why you might want to do this is players have a habit of finding things that you don't see yourself. Another perspective really helps. So many times I've had a player review a rule set that I've made and go, oh, Kate, did you intend for me to have this uh, free 7th level spell that I don't have to concentrate on? And I will go, whoa, 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 where did you read that? That is definitely not how that works. Um, it seems like a very simple thing to go, well, surely when I review my uh, list that I've added and these new rules, I would see all the flaws. You know, it's, it's my world, it's, I'm the DM. You do, but sometimes you'll write something in a way that you didn't quite intend. So always make sure, share these things at a game. It gives you time to talk to the players and really kind of allow them to find the flaws in the things that you've made. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have for now. I just wanted to make a post on this um, because I think out of game interaction is really a crucial part of managing your world. I hope you agree. If there's something you think that I left out, then please let me know. Uh, otherwise, thank you for watching. Um, again, down below, I'll link a couple of websites um, to do with map creation and token creation. Um, hopefully they help you. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please give like and subscribe. It really helps out. And if you want to support me in another way, um, I will have my Patreon and Twitter listed down below. Thank you.